Okay, all right. So let's talk about now the next portion of this teaching, which is very, very important. And you don't hear this in church. I'm reading now from Leviticus chapter 27, verses from 30 to 32. Leviticus chapter 27, verses from 30 to 32. Okay. Now, let me read from the Word of God, and then I'm going to explain to you how things are supposed to be. This is what the Bible says. And all tithe, one-tenth, right? Tithing. And all tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Okay, I'm reading Leviticus 27, verses from 30 to 32, from the New King James Version of the Bible. Okay, amen. If you are reading a different translation, you know, some of the words are be dif may be different, but the context is the same. Okay, so let me read it again, verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It belongs to God. It is holy to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. In other words, it is consecrated to God. It belongs to Him. One tenth, okay, of our income belongs to God. And it's holy to God. Okay? That's one way that we put God first in our lives and not Satan. Because if we are not, you know, honoring God in this fashion, then we are honoring Satan. Because we end up sowing money into Satan's kingdom. And that's going to get us in trouble. A lot of trouble. So let me read it again. And then I'm going to meditate on it and tell you exactly how it's supposed to be done. That's what they don't teach in church. In church, they teach you to give 10%. Okay? That's why people give 10% and they are still cursed. Because they're still robbing God. Yeah. They give 10% and they're still robbing God. Well, let's find out why. And all the tide, verse 30 again, and all the tide of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree. Is the Lord's. It belongs, they belong to God. It is holy to the Lord. Verse 31. If a man wants at all to redeem any of his tithes, if he wants, because he there, you know, he's keeping 90% already. But if he wants to redeem the 10% that belongs to God, he can. Okay? God is not saying, no, you cannot. No, God is saying, yeah, you can. But let's see what's happened next. He shall add one-fifth to it. He shall add one-fifth to it. What is one-fifth? One-tenth is 10%. One-fifth is 20%. 20%. Don't go anywhere. Okay? If a man wants to keep the 10% that belongs to God, he must add 20% to it. On top of the 10%, he shall add 20%. So now you know that 10% is not enough to keep you out of curses, okay? Because you're still robbing God. Now, I'm going to explain this, but let's read verse 32 first. And concerning the tide of the herd and of the flock, of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one, one shall be holy to the Lord. So in other words, summarizing, okay, 10% of your income, of my income, belongs to God. Automatically, automatically, from your first income that you receive in your life, okay, 10% was holy to God. All right? So now you know. Amen? So now you know how long you have been robbing God, right? Because if you keep everything, you are honoring Satan. If you give 10%, you're honoring God. But at least this is the thing. Okay, how many times you started giving 10% and then later on you quit? And you didn't give 10% anymore. You kept it to yourself. Well, every time you kept the 10% of God to yourself, you owed God the 10% plus 20% over the 10%. 
So now, how does that mathematics work? Well, I, I'll explain to you how it works. Let's say you earn $10,000. So $10,000, $1,000 belongs to God. Now, if you keep that $1,000 and, and, and then later on you want to pay God, that $1,000 back to God, you got to add 20% to it, which is $200. So now, instead of paying God back $1,000, you're paying him $1,200. That's what the 10% come to play. Because, the, I mean, the 20%. The 20% is out of, not out of the whole amount that you earn, your whole income, okay? It's from the tent that you took, that you kept. 90% belongs to you. Only 10% belongs to God. Now, 20% is off the 10%, not off the 100%. Because the other 90% didn't belong to God, only 10%. So now God says, if you want to keep my 10%, you can. But pay me back and add 20% to it. So now instead of owing God $1,000 out of the $10,000, you owe God now $1,200. Now you tell me if you know the amount that you owe God for keeping his 10% all throughout your life. You don't know. There's no way that you will find out. Well, then there's one thing you can do to start paying that back. Since you cannot pay it all at once, even if you could, even if you knew the amount that you owed God, but let's say you still didn't have the money to pay him back. Well, there's another one. There's another way you can do it. Okay. Now, from now on, every time, you give 10%, every time you're supposed to give 10%, add 20% to it to pay back what you been stolen from God, stealing from God, okay? Add 20% to it. Now, when the Bible says in Malachi that we have been robbing God of the tithes and offerings, so the tithing, we already know is 10%, but how about the offerings? Well, then if you add offerings to the tithing, it's going to be more. So I'll tell you what I'm doing, folks. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm doing. And you talk to God about the amount that you should do. But one thing I know, if you have ever, ever skipped, you know, giving God 10%, okay, then you owe God an interest rate of 20% of that 10%. So in other words, as I gave you the, gave you the example, if you owe God 10,000, Okay, then, I mean, if you, you know, earn 10000 then a 1000 belongs to God. And because you stole that money, you kept it for yourself. Now you, you want to pay back? Now add 20% to it. So that is one way that you can start paying God back by adding 20% to it. Now, I'll tell you what I do because there's also offerings included. Okay, I do it 15% because I want to make sure I'm paying God back his interest. Even though I don't have all the money to pay him back for all the tithing that I have kept, but at least I'm showing him that I'm willing to pay him back. So now I'm adding 20% to my 10%, which, it's, which is 12% instead of 10. Now my tithing instead of 10% is 12%. But I'm also paying another 3% to cover for my offerings. Folks, if you are paying your tithing and you still owe money to God from tithings that you held before, you are still, okay, robbing God because you are not paying him back from the old money that you owed God. So do show God something that you are willing to pay him back. Show him that from now on, you're going to add that the one, t one fifth, which is 20% to your 10%. Okay. And you can add another 1% or two or 3% or even more if you want to, to, to also give him the offerings on top of the tithing. So I'll tell you what I do and I feel peace about it. And I have heard testimonies of people that did it the same way in the past and they were very, became prosperous so much. So I do 15%. That gives me peace. That keeps me peaceful with God because at least I'm not paying God all that I owe at once, but I am willing to pay him back little by little. And I believe he will be glad with that because at least I'm doing more 
than the 10%. If I only give 10%, I will continue robbing God because I owe him the interest of tidings that I kept to myself before. Now you talk to God about it. This is the roadmap for you to become healthy and wealthy. Okay? Healthy and wealthy. Now you talk to God about it. I gave you the roadmap for you to become healthy and wealthy. Okay? And, and, and also having peace in your life and prosperity and protection and all the other stuff. Now, if you agree with me or if you do not agree with me, I encourage you to listen to the whole this whole teaching again more than one time listen to it two three four times until you get it because the moment that you get it and you start applying this to you your life will change because god backs his promises he backs his word amen leviticus chapter 27 verse 30 to 32 i read it from the new king james version of the bible next time now they say that you have to pay 10 percent in church Always remember, 10% is not enough. If you have ever kept in a portion of your tithing, which I believe you have, because I think everybody has done it, then you owe God more than just 10%. You owe God more. Okay? So go back and read these scriptures for yourself. Leviticus chapter 27, verses from 30 to 32. Okay? And do it what you feel in your heart that is the right thing to do in between you and God. If you do it God's way, he will back you. He will prosper you. He will make sure that cancer will leave your body. Because God is faithful to his promises. He is promising you in, in Proverbs chapter 3. Okay, He's promising you if you fulfill that scripture right there. Proverbs 3. You will become healthy. You will become healthy because that's what the word of the Lord says. You have strength in your old days. Okay. You have strength in your bonds. That is a promise right from heaven, right from the word of God. God bless you now. And if you decided to do, to, to start honoring God with your 15% or 13 or 12, I would say to you, okay, you should start with my ministry. Because I'm the one teaching you this. You have never ever heard this in church. You heard this probably for the first time from me. Okay. And we also receive tidings and offerings at my website, brothercarlos.com. 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 You can, you know, offer your tithing there plus your offerings and plus your payback. You know, your interest there from, you know, your 13, 12, 15%, however you want to do it. Okay, but you should do it more than 10% because that is the way to do it. You got to add the interest. You can honor God through our ministry. That's what I recommend because I'm the one teaching you this. Nobody else is. I'm the one. Okay, so I believe God wants you to sow your 15% or 12 or 13 in, or 14 in my ministry brothercardus.com brothercardus.com okay all right and if i were you i would start applying this to your life immediately god bless you now and have a wonderful day bye now